Cool 101.7, we have a wonderful story coming our way about Simon and Garfunkel. It's uh, coming to the deck auditorium, and uh, I have Taylor Bloom on the phone. You play Paul Simon. First of all, good morning. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Very good, thank you. So you are the Paul Simon character. That's correct, yeah. I uh, I sing all the Paul Simon parts, and then we've got a great performer named Ben Cooley who sings all the Art Garfunkel parts. So what did it take to prepare for something like this? Well, it's uh, it's quite a lot, actually. The show has 27 songs, uh, and Ben and I sing on uh, almost all of them. Um, there's a couple of there's, there's a short instrumental piece in the middle there. So mm-hmm. first of all, we had to learn all of this music, and not just right. in terms of you know being a fan and liking the, liking the songs, but learning the intricate details of each song. Um, and then sort of trying to bring a, a real authenticity to the performance, you know, emulating. I don't know if you, you hear my speaking voice, but it's kind of low. Yeah. So I have to I work, uh, you know, kind of hard and train to sort of sound like Paul Simon when I sing. Uh, and Ben had to do the same uh, to perform as our Garfunkel. You, you took away my next question. I was going to say here, your, your voice seems a little low and you're doing a, a <laughs> singer that is known for doing high parts and also a pretty high singing voice, even in his solo work. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely uh, took some work to even just emulate the way that Paul Simon sounds when he sings, like his, the way he articulates words. Um, but also it takes a certain amount of, uh, you know, vocal stamina for someone like me. Like you can hear my speaking voice. I'm kind of like a natural baritone. Um, but to, to sing up in those higher parts. Um, but fortunately, we've got a, a great team, um, so I can I can really use the microphone to my advantage uh, because we've got a great sound engineer and stuff like that. So, but uh, yeah, it definitely is. Uh, it's taken a lot of work to get to be able to perform the role. I would imagine, and then you have to come across as Paul Simon, so you've got to learn all of his mannerisms and, and all of his uh, details in order to bring those songs across. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's some great footage of the two of them performing over the years. There's there's a few clips on YouTube from, you know, when they were in their early 20s uh, playing like the craft music hall and stuff. And so watching some of that, it's really, it's really helpful to um, sort of learn some of the body language that they would both they would both have during uh, during their performances. So to try to like as you're playing a song, not only be nailing the guitar parts and nailing the vocals, but also to like emulate them physically so that we, we sort of give as much of an impression of their performance as possible. What was something, uh, as you were preparing for the Paul Simon role, what was something that really surprised you or, or took you, uh, it just kind of knocked you over when you learned about it? Well, the, the thing that always amazes me about Simon and Garfunkel is how, how much music they made and how much success they enjoyed in such a brief period of time. I mean, we're talking like, you know, eight years that they were really together. Um, they produced five albums with some huge hits on them. And in the early 70s, they were the biggest, the biggest musical sensation that had ever been. You know, they, the, the, the sales of Bridge Over Troubled Water surpassed the Beatles, Elvis. I mean, it was the biggest thing in the world. And they'd only been working together, you know, as Simon and Garfunkel for, you know, eight or nine years at that point, which just blows me away. It's, I mean, I, I, and people always ask, like, well, is there anything in the show that sort of, um, exposes or talks a little bit about why they broke up. And it's like, to me, it's like, well, listen, like any friendship, no matter how strong, would be tested to be like launched into the public eye at such a huge level in such a short period of time. It's no wonder, you know? Yeah. And you always find that when the, there's a duo or a band that the media tends to split them apart and then try to ask about the other person. And even if you answer uh, truthfully, you're going to wind up giving up something that the other person isn't going to like that you said. Exactly. That's so true. So, Taylor, when you uh, before you got here uh, doing uh, Simon and Garfunkel, were you a huge fan? You talked about that there was a lot of uh, uh, admiration when you came into this role. Were you a huge Simon and Garfunkel fan to start with? Well, I grew up listening to a lot of uh, the, the same, like a lot of music in that genre. So, you know, I remember being in the car, you know, driving to soccer practice or whatever as a kid. And my mom <laughs> would have Joni Mitchell and Cat Stevens and James Taylor on and Simon and Garfunkel as well. Um, and so I was really primed uh, to, to like deepen my love of their music. You know, I, I knew like, you know, a lot of the songs that most people know, and I loved those songs. I remember the first time I heard the song America, I flipped out. I thought it was the most beautiful song. Uh, and so, you know, it was a, an amazing experience as a fan of their music to be able to dig in even deeper into their canon and really understand so much of the nuance that's going on there. And, and I still, you know, when I'm home in New York between tours, 
You know, if I'm riding my bike somewhere on the train, like chances are I've got Simon and Garfunkel playing in my headphones. Wow. Was there uh, something, was there a song that you, when you heard it, you went, oh yeah, they did that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the one? There was one that I was like, wait, this is Simon and Garfunkel. I, <laughs> it's escaping my memory right now, but there was one that I was like, oh, I didn't know this was a Simon and Garfunkel tune. And I was so excited. I, for some reason, it just ran out of my head, though. They, uh, you, you had said uh, that they, you know, there was a lot of music in that era that they were a part of. And I think some of their stuff bleeded into other artists. And, and I find myself still, when I listen to some Simon and Garfunkel, I say, oh, that's right. They did that song. And I think people are going to go to this show and realize some of that. They're going to go, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And, and we love seeing the, the reactions that some of our audience have because the way this, the show is, is built, there's a, there's a sort of multimedia projection element going on behind us during the show uh, that shows a lot of what was happening in the world and tells some of the stories of what was happening culturally at the time. And it, it's great because, you know, for the audience members who were around during that period, you know, they grew up listening to this music. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a loud truck going by. That's okay. Um, they 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 get to see that stuff, and it reminds them of like, oh yeah, I remember seeing that commercial on TV, or <laughs> oh yeah, I remember what was going on. And then for the younger audience members who happen to be Simon and Garfunkel fans, I think it really deepens and enriches their experience of the music because it it seats everything in this sort of historical context. You understand, oh, that's why Paul Simon was thinking about this. That's why he wrote this line. That's why he wrote that line. So it really helps to deepen the experience of the music. And you mentioned there's so much music in this. How do you get story in it as well? Well, basically the way we do it, it's, it's between Ben and I and uh, the projections. So the projections really tell a lot of the story. And then every few songs, Ben and I sort of step out of character and we come Ben and Taylor again and we say, you know, during this period of time in Garfunkel, we're doing this. They were doing that. They were experiencing this. They were exploring this in their lives. So we really just tell their story from the third person. Okay. I think it sounds interesting because uh, people can go and learn more about them. But like you said, there's so much music in this that, uh, you know, the story almost has to be to bridge the songs together. And then uh, you said the production is behind you. I think that's a great idea in order to bring things along. And it's almost like a concert that you learn about these artists. Exactly. And it's also the only place that you'll be able to hear this music live reproduced at this level, you know, you'll hear, you, you can go to a concert and hear people cover some of these songs, but there is such attention to detail in the way we've approached the music that it is going to be very, very close to what a live Simon and Garfunkel concert would have sounded like. So you guys are going to like set up a little Central Park kind of thing uh, at the deck when you come here, right? Oh, absolutely. hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. So what is the number one question when you meet people along this tour? What is the number one question that they approach you with? People always ask, have you met Simon and Garfunkel? <laughs> and I, I always say, gosh, I wish. I would love to, you know. Pro probably we wouldn't have the chance to meet them in the same room because as far as we know, things are still a little difficult between them. But it would be such a privilege to meet Paul Simon or Art Garfunkel. Have you heard anything? Have they said anything about the show? Like, wow, you know, I, I took it in or I heard from my friends that it's really good. As far as we know, I mean, we've, we've gotten permission from Paul Simon because he's the one who's got sort of like legal purview over the whole rights situation. And he said, go ahead, do it, do whatever you want. But as far as we know, we had a rumor one time that he came to one of our shows. We played on Long Island. We had a rumor that he came to that show, but it was never confirmed. So we don't know if he's ever <laughs> seen the show. So you don't have any feedback or anything. That's a bummer. No, if you if you came backstage with some notes, though, I'd be all, all ears. <laughs> <laughs> How would you, are you one of those people that you just go crazy when you see somebody famous or would you kind of be like, Hey Paul, what'd you think? You know, most people I'm pretty chill about. If Paul Simon came back, I would probably have to try to work to keep my cool. That's for sure. <laughs> We're talking to uh, Taylor Bloom. He plays Paul Simon in the Simon and Garfunkel story. That's coming November 10th down to the deck uh, auditorium. It's going to be a great show, especially if you're a Simon and Garfunkel fan. What, uh, what is the, deep cut song that you guys are very proud of that you're doing in the show there is a song that ben sings it is affectionately known as for emily and it's this art garfunkel solo vocal song it's actually the only song that art garfunkel wrote lyrics for it's this beautiful tune and it's one of those songs where when we start to play it you can sort of feel the energy in the audience change because everyone's like oh i forgot about this song i love this song and one night after the show 
Ben and I were out in the in the lobby, you know, greeting people, and this couple came up to us and they said, "Oh, thank you for playing for Emily. That's the song we danced to at our wedding. It meant the world to us." So that's one of our very favorite deep cuts to play. It really, really um, resonates with the audience. Now I know a million people have asked you this. I don't know if you've ever answered it. What is your favorite, absolute favorite song that you love to do of theirs? Oh, man. You know, I, I it comes in waves because there'll be a few weeks where I'm like, oh, man, I love Keep the Customer Satisfied. And then there'll be a few weeks where it's like, oh, America's the most fun song to play. Right now, the song I'm really digging is uh, Baby Driver. We have so much wow. fun playing Baby Driver. We have an amazing keys player who takes a piano solo. His name's Adam Sachs. He just nails it. So we, we have a great time playing Baby Driver. That's my current favorite song to, to do in the show. You know, there's a movie called Baby Driver, and that song is in it. Yeah. Oh, it's the best. I, I watched that movie. I went in to see it, and I was like, hey, this is a great movie. When are they going to play the song? <laughs> of course, it plays right at the very end, sort of like brings you into the end credits. And I was like, there it is. Hell yeah. <laughs> great movie, though. Yeah, yeah. Really, really entertaining. Uh, Taylor Bloom plays Paul Simon in the Simon and Garfunkel story, November 10th, down at the uh, Deck Auditorium. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I'm looking forward to the show because this sounds like you guys really have this nailed, and it's interesting to go see something where you relive it while you're a part of it. Exactly. Our our hope is that you know even the most devoted Simon and Garfunkel fans will leave with a little bit of new information, a little bit of deeper knowledge of their history. And we also always hope that anyone sitting in the audience could close their eyes at any time during the show and believe they were listening to Simon and Garfunkel. So come on, check us out, and hopefully we can give that to you. There we go. Taylor Bloom, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a great morning.